Welcome everyone. My name is Stephen and I'll be your moderator this evening. I'm very excited to welcome uh, Dr. Daniel Vasquez, General Practitioner and International Lecturer as our speaker tonight for an inside look at how he uses his Sprintray 3D printer to print permanent single crowns in-house. So before we get started, I hand over to Dr. Vasquez. I'd like to uh, take a moment to go over uh, just a few points of housekeeping with you. So first of all, okay. if you have a question at any point during this evening's webinar, please type it in the box labeled have a question and we'll do our best to answer as many of those questions live at the end of this event. Uh, secondly, this webinar is sponsored by Sprintray. And thirdly, C is not available for this webinar and that applies to whether you're watching that live or on demand. So, Dr. Vasquez, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I know you're not feeling uh, very well, but we truly appreciate you taking the time to be with us. And with that, I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Daniel Vasquez, and it is my pleasure to be here today and sharing um, beautiful uh, dentistry that we can do today in our practice, thanks to digital dentistry. Um, before uh, I keep going, I just want to, you know, let everybody know that uh, uh, I just had a little, well, I have a cold, so hopefully I don't sound really bad with a microphone, but a little cough. So if, 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 if I have to cough, I'll, I'll, t I'll take a break. Hopefully we can do the whole hour with absolutely no problem because, you know, it's because I, I feel a little bit congested. However, you know, it's just a cold. I did my COVID test and I'm negative, you know. You know, old times, I used to hate people who's, you know, be surrounded by negative people. I used to hate that. And today, I love negative, pe negative people <laughs> when it comes to COVID. But yeah, right now, it's just a little cold and, and uh, hopefully, you know, it goes away. Well, well, again, thank you very much to be here uh, with me today. Um, something I want to share with you, it is, um, I've been practicing digital dentistry for over 15 years. Uh, and I got introduced first with... Uh, uh, with my first computer and when we start taking uh, digital uh, x-rays with uh, with PAs and backlinks is how I started with the digital dentistry. And 15 years ago, I became a CATCAM dentist. I became a CEREC dentist uh, where I do everything in office. And I will tell you, my life completely change uh, since the moment that uh, I became um, a CEREC dentist because not only is fun, uh, it's great to be able to, you know, deliver uh, restorations at same appointment and uh, have, a, you know, that patient's face and smile of satisfaction always, you know, in the, at the same day. And, you know, it's, it's, it's as the time goes by, um, you know, from CAD CAM, I move into the uh, tomography uh, on 3D x-rays and integrating those two. Uh, it was perfect to uh, be able to uh, meld surgical guides for our implants until five years ago that I got um, introduced to the uh, to uh, 3D printing. Things got, you know, they got a kind of little, little wild. Okay. So let me change. I'm going to take off myself from the screen. Okay. And give me a second. So now you... You can see my my whole screen now. <clears throat> Sorry. So in, in our office, we have today, we actually have four uh, scanners, uh, two of them. Uh, they're full uh, scanners for chair side dentistry, and two of the other scanners is only to scan. Something uh, that uh, we've been implementing more and more in our office, and uh, the scanners uh, uh, that only scan and the intraorals are in the hygiene department where um, we always scan our patients so we can see many, many problems the patient have and we can explain uh, you know, more easy and also you know, having a full system in our office, you know, it makes things, you know, it simplifies things. But going back to the, uh, how, my, how I moved from, from, uh, from CAD CAM to tomography and now 3D printing, uh, one of the beautiful things about 3D printing, it, 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 it did open a huge um, venue of offering new services to our patients and be able to do things that we haven't been able to do before. Uh, 
for an, for an example, in our office has been more than seven years that we don't take a analog impression. Every, everything is digital. So for this, one of the most important things was able to print a model. So five years ago, when I got when I got introduced to uh, to 3D printing, uh, things changed because now you know from my uh, from my scan I can convert it in STL, and and using lab softwares like InLab software or ExoCAD or 3Shape, and now today with SpringRay having uh, design services where if you don't have the capacity to mill restorations in your office or a software that allows you to produce an STL file, then you scan, you send it to uh, SpringRig, and SpringRig is, uh, they have these design services. They'll do everything for you. They'll send the STL, and you just, you know, you will just print. The quality that we have today, um, these impressions, it's just incredible. Before it was necessary to have um, the uh, good impressions of teeth. Today is about the entire uh, impressioning of the soft tissue, the, the teeth, uh, be able to see embrasures, the anatomy of the teeth, uh, the, the palate, uh, soft tissue. Uh, it, it is very important. And, uh, and today, uh, there's many, many systems out there uh, that can do a great job. Uh, we have the Seric Prime Scan, we have the Prime Scans, we have three shape. You know, three shape have trios. You have uh, the wireless trios. You have Medit. You have so many scanners out there that uh, uh, they're excellent scanners. Excellent scanners. In my office, I am a dance place runner guy. I'm a mentor, trainer uh, for dance place runner. So. Pretty much all the equipment that we have in our officers, Dance Place Girona, and having all that ecosystem, or uh, today the universal Dance Place Girona, and adding 3D printing with SpringRay, it opens, you know, uh, we can do so many, so many, so many things. Okay, so uh, really important. I know this is about um, a single crown uh, printing, but it's very important to know that. Uh, a good scanner or a good impression is always going to give us the perfect uh, restoration. It's not only your prep, it's about the, um, the impression. So when you, you have a scanner, you have to follow a protocol and how to scan so you always have a good quality and consistent impression. So whenever you're going to print or mill a restoration, it's always going to fit perfectly fine. So. It's, it's, it's just absolutely no difference from from um, like traditional dentistry, you know, a good prep and uh, uh, a good impression. And you're always going to have back from your lab a good restoration that you're going to do minimum adjustments. And the same thing with, with, you know, with digital dentistry. The impression is extremely important because if the if you have a beautiful prep and you have a good impression, so definitely that restoration is always going to fit perfectly fine. So here uh, on this video was uh, showing and explaining uh, how we do impressions. If anybody is uh, would like to have this video uh, at the end, please, uh, I'm going to put my information so you can email me and I can send this all of this video to you because it's really good to follow a nice protocol. On, on, on scanning. So scanning and a model, scanning in a mouth is supposed to be the same way, no difference. Same speed, same everything. Today's scanners, again, the capture of the data is pretty fast. Um, I use prime scans and the prime scans are great. Um, it allows me to have a full scan of an you know, arch in two and a half minutes. And when I say two and a half minutes, um, I mean a great a good, good, and a very good impression with great data. Um, you can scan faster than that, but I know that sometimes we are missing information. So always, you know, two and a half minutes is, is a good time that I always uh, give myself to have a good impression. And it's not about timing. It's about collecting great data because once you have that, the software is going to do, they're going to do a great job. So everything starts with a scan. Okay, another scan.
do absolutely nothing. Then you need a lab software that allows you to get an SEO file to be able to print. Or if you have uh, the system, for instance, you know, the, the, the family like PrimeScan or the test with the family, full system that you can build, then that, that, that is great. So let's talk about this, okay? Uh, the two, the two dollars crown, okay? Um, yeah, it, it's literally that's what it costs to do a crown, you know, on material. You need a scanner, correct? Uh, you need a software in order to be able to design and create the STL file. So, yeah, this is an investment that it comes up front. But however, you know, once um, I do truly believe that. Uh, uh, every every office should have a intraoral uh, impression um, scanner. Every office. Um, if you are uh, listening to me and you still take impressions with um, with PVS or Alginet, you know there's this new ways and there's scanners out there. They're not expensive and they're great. And today there's so many everything like the softwares Exocat. 3Shape and NLAB, they're open systems, so they will be able to take uh, your uh, your uh, your impression. They can design it, and trust me, the fit and all these restorations that you do when it comes with the intro scanner, the fit is just incredible. You will never regret it. So if you do not have an intro scanner, start doing your homework. If you're in the U.S., go through your vendor, go through Henry Shine, go, and, 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 and then Henry Shine have experts they'll explain everything to you how you know what system will be best for you okay what is the necessities of your office okay so that you can get the right scanner for your office but without a scanner you can't do this and, and i will tell you once you have a scanner um there's many possibilities going to be open many services going to be able to offer to your patient and i'll be talking about some of the services during during this meeting and the reason i'm going to be talking about this is because speaking how to print a single crown well you know it takes me only five minutes and there's no science behind this okay so i'm going to be showing a few cases from this moment on. i'm going to be showing a few cases different cases simple cases and very complicated cases and the power of 3D printing, and hopefully you guys enjoy this. But yes, you know, it's about $2 what it costs to do a crown, and um, it, it takes about 30 minutes, 35 minutes to print today. Um, so literally uh, today, a uh, crown is at your side. If you have the software, the lab software in your office, and you can scan, design it, and, and print it, it's, it's, it's just great. If you don't have the... Um, the power of uh, of printing today or no, or milling, then uh, you scan and you send it to to uh, to your favorite lab. They can design it for you, and they will send back the SL for you to be printed. So there's many ways that uh, um, that you can do. Uh, uh, Springray offers a system, a design services where you scan. Uh, you send it to them, and I think a crown it takes about one or two days to get back to you. So I don't think that's efficient enough. Um, I think if you have a lab technician that is uh, um, that has uh, is digitalized, uh, you, you can ask them, "Can you do the designs for me and send back to me with the STL?" The STL, trust me, there's many labs will do this for you. Okay, and uh, if you're here in the U.S. Most of the labs are digi they're digitalized now, and uh, uh, I speak a lot for all labs in America. And I'll tell you, all labs in America also is full of digital labs today, so it's easy to find one. Just go online and find a good lab. If your lab doesn't do digital dentistry, so my suggestion is my suggestion will be you know you know be kind, but but you can move forward and and, and get a lab that, that they can do the service of designing for you and uh, they send it back to you. Okay. So the, um, this is the first case. Um, uh, this is when I first started uh, trying all these materials. Um, uh, we have a, a, a great, beautiful material that has is is resin with ceramic. Uh, it calls Bagel Barcel Smile, 
and from Spring Rick. And we have another uh, material from Spring Rick that is on X, a great material that I'll be using also for single crowns bridges, mostly bridges, and for uh, hybrids, uh, temporary, you know, all in fours that I'm going to be showing a case. Uh, in this case, uh, we use the bagel by Show Smile. And um, what better, like, uh, to show the power of the 3D printing? So we have this uh, patient comes in, we remove uh, the old restoration, and uh, um, we, patient has this amalgam to chew, you know, all the dentin is stain from the old amalgam. Um, you can see the margin. Uh, uh, we're gonna modify, we're gonna modify the prep. Uh, why? Because today uh, we, let me let me let me put myself here in front of the screen so everybody can see me. Today we are in adhesive dentistry. We're not with we don't need mechanical retention. We need enamel and we need dentin. We can bond in both structures, dentin and enamel. Okay. So do I need a lot of retention? No, because I'm gonna get it from the enamel and the dentin. Okay. So Mechanical retention, like old times, because we're gonna be cementing with traditional cement. Um, I don't, we, we don't do that. I don't do um, thick margins or shoulders. That's old school. Okay. Well, today we're moving to the new materials. Today there's a lot of um, strong materials like Emacs, like uh, lithium silicates, like uh, Tessera, uh, uh, Vita Supremity, and Today, one of the most beautiful materials to be milled, it is zirconia. So all these materials, okay, uh, they're very strong. So you don't need actually to have a shoulder or a thick chamfer. Today, I have modified preps, and I'm using a technique that is called BOPT. It's biological orientated technique. Um, I, I learned this technique from a group of uh, Italians, uh, a lab technician and a dentist who got together. And they went back to the old school of when we used to work with gold, the prep with gold, feather edge, the adaption was perfect, correct? So today with these, today's materials are so strong, we can't use this kind of prep. <clears throat> and also because you're gonna go bonded, okay? so. Literally, you don't need to have like a defined margin. You can put your margin, you know, half a millimeter, uh, millimeter on top of the CAJ and seal that perfectly fine. So that's what I did on this prep. We modify and we, because the material they're going to be using is going to be either a printed material or it's going to be a, um, a ceramic material, but the prep is going to be the same. So let me remove myself from the screen. So now uh, we modify the prep, and here you go, okay? This, we already took the impression. Um, as you can see, there's no, um, right now, actually, what I'm doing, I'm sending this case to, to the lab. Uh, we use, uh, uh, I will say, uh, portals. They're safe. They're, they're HIPAA compliance portal. In this case, we're using the Connect software in order to send it to the lab. Now, yes, I'll be sending this to myself, um, uh, but I'm going to use this portal. This is the prescription that I'm doing. This is a male patient. I'm going to send it to myself. And um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open this in my, in my InLab software, and we'll be designing this restoration. So this is the lab software. This is not the chair site. This is the lab software. And I'm already designing my restoration. Okay, here what I'm going to do is so simple. The software is going to do everything for you. Uh, chair site dentistry has become extremely simple. A couple clicks here and there. But the most important here that uh, is what I want to say is about the power of these new materials but your prep is extremely important uh if you if you're going to be prepping with a big shoulder or big chamfer it's not gonna work you're gonna have issues sitting these crowns but whenever you do this feather edge uh, you will have a phenomenal results sitting these crowns to contact occlusion and because these are bonded 
you know, nothing's going to happen to them. They're not going to break. They're unbreakable. Um, I made, uh, uh, I've been talking about veneers. You know, when we prep veneers, we never make a, you know, a thick chamfer or a light chamfer. I always try to do feather edge so my veneers goes and and they sit perfectly fine on the tooth. We seal it with a composite. We polish it very nice. And the next thing you see is a beautiful soft tissue. The soft tissue heals very nicely around there. Okay, so the power of 3D printing, the first thing that I did, it's uh, prints and models here. Let me take myself here. I printed some models. Um, I wanna see the fit because I'm starting I'm starting to work with these materials, correct? So I wanna see the difference or the comparison between uh, printed and other materials like Emacs, Suprinity, and uh, and uh, uh, Celtra Do. In this case, we use Celtra Do. So this is already uh, the printed crown. We glazed it, we stained it like a natural, to, you know, like we do to ceramic, and the, the result is so beautiful. If you, again, uh, there's no limitation working with materials. Everything is in your hands. When you do chair side dentistry, you you learn how to work with all these materials. Um, working with resins is more simple because you don't have to, you know, either use a centrum furnace or an oven. It's a glaze and stain. Everything is like here, so it makes your life so easy. That's a different view of the crown that I believe it looks gorgeous, looks beautiful. And look at those margins. <laughs> those margins are incredible. You know, the, the integrity of those margins, and they don't break. Uh, these composite crowns, they don't break. And because they're going to go bonded into the tooth, okay, um, they will not, uh, um, they will stay there. Very important. I'll be touching bases about how to bond this, okay? At the end, I'm going to show, I'm going to explain how to bond these uh, materials, okay? I did melt uh, three different, you know, two other restorations. One was Emacs that is on the left, and the right side is Vita uh, Suprinity. Both of them, uh, Emacs, we know that it has about 500 megapascals of strength. Vita uh, um, Suprinity has almost 600 uh, uh, megapascals of strength. The uh, resin, printed resin that I'm using, is about 175, 185 of strength, almost like the two structure. You can see uh, the the resin one is in the middle, Emacs on the left, and Chapin on the right. Now, um, this is using a microscope to see how the margins are sealed, because what I when I'm designing these restorations, I in my parameters and my in, in in my margin. I bump it up to 150, so I have a thicker margin. So what I'm gonna do, exactly right there, you can see it seals into the margin or into you know into the tooth, but this little step. So that step, what you're gonna do, uh, what are you gonna do on that step? You get these uh, polishers, and all you do is just blend it in, just blend the thing in. So it's just, you remove that, you know, little ledge that you have, just polish it. And that's that, that's that's more than enough that, that you need. Okay. So here's my prep. As you can see, there's no margin. You can seal this crown as close as possible to the CJ. Okay. Um, when I do when I do cement these restorations, I can even pack a cord or I can uh, you know pack Teflon tape if there's any bleeding. In this case, uh, we dry very nice the tooth, and we're able to on this restoration. This is how it looks. This is immediately after, you know, uh, cementation. You can see the integrity of that soft tissue, how beautiful it seals perfectly fine. And this is just plastic, okay? You know, it's, it's uh, people have, uh, <clears throat> people have asked me, Dr. Vasquez, will that crown break? And the answer is no, it's not gonna break. Uh, it will debond. Mm, it might, because uh, the 
the resin, you know, the composite, even it has ceramic on it, it, it has more elasticity. It, 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 is, it, it can actually come off more simple than just a, a glass ceramic round, correct? So it can debond, but but how will you avoid the debonds? It's very simple, okay? Listen, number one, you have to sandblast the intaglio of the restoration, okay? You have to sandblast. After you sandblast, you have to use ceramic primer. You can use, uh, <clears throat> for me, the best ceramic primers out there is the Monobon Plus from, from Ivoclear and the, uh, the ceramic primer from Vita. Both of those are universal. They will bond to everything, meaning gold, metal, plastics. They will, they will bond to everything, okay? So you need that cold plate, okay? In my office, I'm a Vita guy, so we use the, the uh, Vita ceramic uh, 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 agent. But again, the Monobon Plus is a phenomenal. Both of them, they're universal, and they work with everything. So once you do that, now you go, to, you go into the tooth, you isolate it, you clean it very well. You can, you know, soft edge really quick, total edge it. Then I used your adhesive, scrub it into the tooth very well, 30 seconds. Light, you know, uh, just blow some air, thin the 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 the, uh, the composite liquid, okay, or the adhesive, and then uh, like cure it and cement, you know, put your bonding the best, you know, your the company that you use, and in, in my hands, I use Panadia SA Universal Cement from Kuroi Narataki. Phenomenal product. Phenomenal product. Easy cleanup. It's, it's so simple to use, and uh, um, that one has already the saying inside the uh, into the in, into the, the the syringe. So there's no need to use ceramic edge or ceramic primer and the integrity. You just have to sandblast it because the Panavia S Universal Cement already has that. Okay, so things are becoming more simple and companies are making things more simple for us. But again, the, the, the point here is if you see the margin of, of that too, it's just, it's just beautiful, okay? You know, from the lingual view, it looks great. And the, and, and, and the best thing is the sealed, okay? In this case, I use uh, the 3M product Okay, so, uh, adhesive and cement to bond this restoration. Okay, and you can see how beautiful this restoration blends into the tooth. It looks like literally enamel. That's what it looks. It looks like I replaced the enamel. And that's the other thing when it comes to the prep. Okay, it needs to, the way it blends in, it's just beautiful. You know, it's just like you really can't see the margin. Okay, you can get your explore and just go feel the tooth and and exactly where the the, the, the tooth and, and the restoration meet and, and it's just nice and flush. Okay, because the composite's gonna seal very nice, you polish it very nice at margin, and this is the result that you're gonna get every single time. So I'm a fan of the BOPT technique. I'm gonna be showing right now uh, another case made on models uh, why I like this this technique okay so BOPT is biological orientated uh, preparation technique and what it does is we're going to train the soft tissue okay if we if we want to increment the senate of the teeth we don't need to do surgery we'll increment that by pushing the tissue more gingerly with the you know adding you know more ceramic so adding ceramic on the margins we can actually train the soft tissue and you know it's like i was thinking how's that well it's very simple if <clears throat> when you practice implant dentistry one of the most important things, the most difficult part, is to train tissue. Placing the implant is the easiest thing to do. Restoring the implant, simple, very simple. The most difficult part is to how we're going to manage the soft tissue so we can get as a result an uh, uh, implant restoration that looks exactly like a tooth like if it's coming, like if we never extract the tooth. So what do we do? We do temporaries. We, we polish these temporaries very nice. So when we 
when we put the implant inside, yeah, it's surrounded by the soft tissue, what's cool, what are we going to get? We're going to get a very nice, well, beautiful tissue. So the day that we're going to restore it and we take impressions, it looks great. So the best material for this case, always spend zirconia. Always spend zirconia. A polished zirconia, it is the it's the best material that soft tissues love because if it's polished, that it needs to be polished all the time, there's going to be a less proliferation of bacteria between the, in, between the ceramic and soft tissue. So your soft tissue is always going to be healthy. It's never going to be bleeding. If you put, uh, let's see, a temporary crown made of composite, and it's not well polished. And the day that you take it, you take the, the temporary or the healing above it, you're going to see the tissue is going to be bleeding. Why? Because there was plaque, there was bacteria attached to the crown. And the tissue, it is bleeding. Things that is not going to happen if it's highly polished, call it, uh, call it uh, uh, resin, call it emas, call it zirconia. But zirconia is one of the, one of the, you know, materials that tissue really loves that material. You know, it loves, it loves zirconia, it loves gold. And, and also, you know, old times it used to love, you know, the amalgam. So let me move myself away. So straight prep. A straight prep, uh, again, um, is a modification. It's like a veneer prep, but, you know, it's like there's no margin nowhere. It's just straight, and we are going to go as close as you know, about a millimeter on top of the CAJ, that's where we're going to put our margins. So there's no place, this, you know, defined place for this margin, okay? So as you can see, my margins are way below the gum, okay? And we are going to define right now our restorations. This is already in the software. We already picked the margins, and we're going to send this to... Uh, to the uh, this is the church site software. We're gonna send this to the uh, to the lab software because we're gonna need to print these restorations. Once they are in the lab software, we're going to design. Now, very important. Okay, um, here's uh, yeah, the first thing I did is I pop my margins, make my margin a little bit thicker. Right now, I'm just doing you know the design. And this is going to be for the temporary crowns. Now, um, can you can you mail the permanence out of this file? And the answer is yes. So I like to do many times temporaries because we're going to work with a soft tissue and I want a beautiful soft tissue before I insert the permanent restorations. So here we go. This is a... Uh, Three quarter crowns, I call it craniers. It's not a crown, it's not a veneer, it's a combination of both. And we send we send in all these files to be created like STL files, and then we're going to transfer this uh, uh, all these STL files, we're gonna transfer them into the um, into the railway software online so we can print this. Now uh, because I'm already inside the software of the in-lab and I don't have a physical model because I did not took impressions with, with PBS, but I have the impressions, the digital impressions. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a physical bottle and also I'm going to create some dyes. So we're going to be able to mail our restorations and fit them in these models and we want a nice passive fit so uh when the patient comes in for the final restorations uh, we don't have to do literally no adjustments at all because everything's been done in the model so i'm creating a model right now as you can see um, i just created the dies that i'm going to be able to remove okay and then we're going to print this <coughs> I'm going to send all my restorations to the printer. And uh, once, uh, uh, you know, it's how long it's going to take this to print. It's going to take about probably 35 minutes, uh, 30, you know, about 35 minutes. That's what it's going to take. Now, what is the difference between printing six restorations where I can feel the, you know, completely, you know, like we have the six restorations or I can just say, you know something, 
I want to nail multiple restorations, okay? So uh, it's going to take the same time, okay? I was just playing, uh, yeah, just wasting some resin, and I want to see how long it's going, how long it's going to take yeah, to mill, you know, to print these restorations. So literally, if you print about 40 of these and you print one, it's going to take the same time because printing is not about the amount, it's about the height, okay? So if it's higher, it's gonna take more. If it's, if it's, but if it's all these, they have the same height, it's gonna take the same time. There you go. We did mailed these restorations uh, for my cases, um, for my um, permanent restorations in aesthetic cases. Um, I like to use the Vita Supraniti. It's a beautiful uh, material because it has, I think it's the only one in the market that has this beautiful opalescence and it makes tea look very natural. Um, that, that's, this is my preference. A lot of people like other materials, but I like this one. Now, I was checking the fit on the dies that I printed and look at that. You know, it's like the fit is beautiful on the mill restorations. But how about the printed? Same thing, no difference. The integrity of the margin is there. It's beautiful. It prints really nice. Okay. <clears throat> we polished all the printed restorations. And uh, all we're going to do, we're going to just push them all the way into soft tissue. And look at the adaption that we have on the, on, on the soft tissue. It's just incredible. So uh, I'm looking forward to have this, you know, um, always a beautiful, nice soft tissue. You know, again, patients come in uh, for restorations. We take the, our digital impression, and then from there, we move into the InLove software. In this case, this patient came in because uh, he wants to get a crown to, on tooth number uh, eight. And I said to him, why don't we do just the four front teeth so we can give you a beautiful smile, and, uh, and we'll just print these restorations so you can see how you're going to be looking. And he agreed with that, so... That's what we did. We design it, we print them, uh, we create a model, and uh, the next thing we did, we delivered to the patient, and uh, uh, here's the printed model with dyes, and this is with the final restorations. Uh, we deliver these to the patient. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, this patient was, uh, when we delivered the permanence, um, uh, the following week he went back home. He's from Ireland, and uh, uh, he got compliments all, you know, everybody, he told me, he got so many compliments about his new teeth. Uh, it, it's just crazy. So, something very important that I want to, that I want to uh, touch bases. You know, yeah, you can, you can print crowns, you can print um, bridges, implant crowns, hybrids, um, but I think one of, the, one of the things that we've been using a lot is making night guards or what we call our office orthotics, okay? Uh, that's, we do, we do those a lot, you know, the hygiene department, every hygienist has a scanner, and they always scan the patient, so, um, if the patient has any word addition, TMG issues, um, muscle issues, we always, you know, recommend uh, the, the the orthotics. Uh, I don't like to call them night guards because it becomes a dental benefit, and I don't like dental benefits. Uh, this is a medical device, so I always call it orthotics. So it's not a couple benefits. So the patient pays for that. So if you already, if you have a scanner. And you have a software like any lab software can do uh, a splint, correct? Um, this is one of the uh, services that we offer in our office that is, uh, we do probably an average about seven to 10 a week. <coughs> the, the, the dental hygienist already scanned the patient. So if the patient needs this, all we have to do is modify the bite. So uh, whenever we uh, we open the bite, so whenever we design it in the software, we can uh, uh, we can design it without a problem with 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 that open bite that we 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 recorded. But 
I do believe, you know, I know I'm talking about, you know, the printed, you know, single restorations, but uh, I think if you're able to do and offer other services, uh, you'd be more happy, more happy uh, than anybody uh, because to do a temporary crown, you have to numb, cut, prep, impression, send it to the lab, send it to yourself, mill it, print it, deliver it, correct? It's a lot of work. Uh, doing these procedures when you have a digital impression device, your dental hygienist and your staff, they already scan, you design it, they print it, they, 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 they wash it, they cure it, they polish it, and all I do is come to the patient, you know, they put it in the patient's mouth, and I said, please wear it. That's what I do. And um, I will tell you that is um, the best thing that we offer in their practice is when is that kind of dentistry that I don't have to do a lot. Okay, so um, these kind of uh, procedures are great. Aligners, wow. You know, if you have the digital impression, aligners are great, okay, because... Pretty much, we don't do nothing on the aligners, just a compression. And if, and when, whenever you have to work a lot, then you just do a little stripping. But these aligners, they fit so so well. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, these uh, mouthpieces, they fit so well. Um, you know, Spring Ray has this uh, material they call Snigar Flex. It's a little blue. I like the I like the color myself. And but the fit, it's just just crazy. You don't have to do nothing. Just scan. And do it now. If you don't have, if, if you don't have the software to design this, then this is something very cool. You scan the patient, you send it to the <coughs> Sprint Ray uh, Design Services, and you will get the design back with artificial intelligence design in less than thirty minutes. In less than thirty minutes, you have the STL. You grab it, you drop it into the printer, and uh, in thirty-five minutes you have uh, an, an, an occlusal guard, orthotic, or spleen, whatever you want to call it, okay? So can it be chair side? Yes, it can be chair side. It's, it's, it's very cool. It's very nice. So the other thing that I like from, from these, from these um, printing this material in the office is the supports. See how easy they clean. I'm going to get a little uh, cough drop. Okay. So uh, it's already printed. I'm showing you that. that it's already printed. I took the audio out. So he, that thing just peels off. Look at that. So easy to peel off. And um, it's one of the services that I, I really love doing in my practice. Okay, let's keep going with uh, with uh, printing restorations. This is a uh, literally uh, eight unit bridge. The soft tissue is completely, you know, bad. Uh, she had an existing bridge where um, teeth were full of decay, so we were able to restore them, designed, and um, in this case, we we print uh, these restorations. And the next thing is we have to make them look good, okay? Because uh, the printed restorations are uh, monochromatic, so they're only one color. So we have good uh, uh, staining glaze kits right now, like the Vita Accent LC. So are we going to do no difference? Uh, we're going to do some chroma, some value. We're going to add some color, and then we're going to glaze. Once we do that, see it looks more natural. And see this, I want to pay attention to this. See how beautiful these restorations are going to sit. Look at that. Push in. This is the prep, doctors. This is the way that we prep. If I had a margins or defined, you know, chamfer or shoulder. 
will be very difficult to have a restoration to fit this way. But modifying our preps, and because we are bonding these restorations, uh, um, I think the, the, the feather edge or the knife edge prep today is one of the most beautiful materials that we can use. Now, <coughs> sorry, this is only a temporary. This is not a permanent. Uh, we're going to be using uh, a full uh, 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 one-piece zirconia, okay, uh, uh, and, uh, for, you know, for the final restoration in this case. This is how it looks after it's been cemented. A couple of photos in there. And you can see how beautiful it looks. I can do this every day. So, this is another case I want to show with everybody. Um, I forgot to take out uh, the Mexican hangover. And the reason I call it Mexican hangover is because um, this girl actually is my sister. Uh, she was in Mexico, and actually I was in Vegas. I was in Caesar Palace, you know, that, that night when she calls me, and she says that, Daniel, you know, it's like, I broke my tooth. I lost my tooth. And go, what are you talking about? And she was just crying. Yes, I was at the pool, and, and I turned back to see where my husband was, and, and I, you know, I slipped on the, on, on, on the pool stairs, and I hit my, my face with, with uh, just right on the edge of, of, of the pool. And I go, did you look for your tooth? And they go, yes, we've been looking for it. And, and uh, no luck. They go, wow. Yeah. So this is uh, the actual the pool where she was. Uh, it was a nice, beautiful pool. Uh, we go very often to that to that hotel. And she sent me pictures. And this is, this is her. Let me take off myself away. This is her. So uh, we have a problem. The problem is that uh, she's in Mexico. She went for a wedding, and she doesn't have a tooth. Um, thanks to the what I do, um, sharing my passion for dentistry, you know, then in, all over the world doing this, um, I have some friends in Puerto Vallarta that I called and, and said, I have an emergency. My sister just broke, you know, just lost her tooth. Uh, he said, "Give me thirty minutes, and we'll meet at we'll meet at the at the at the office." So it was nine o'clock p.m. when they went they were working on her. They took impressions, and she got delivered a state plate. You know, the following day, um, my friends in Puerto Vallarta they also uh, they have the same technology that I have here in the U.S. They have the you know, the digital scanners, they have the printers, and they have a lab who, who does all this digitally. So they produce a uh, a flipper for her, for, you know, the next day. Uh, this is when she comes to my office. This is the flipper was made perfectly fine. Um, the doctor, you know, when we were discussing about the flipper, I said, can you please make it a way that can train the soft tissue? And uh, that's what he did. You know, he uh, training the soft tissue. Uh, we took impressions. Uh, with uh, with the um, with a prime scan, and uh, I did like the shape of the tooth, so I copied the whole thing. We took uh, an X-ray and we merged the files of the impression of the of the mouth and the three D, so we can precisely place that implant exactly where we want it to be. Uh, we treatment plan this in three shape is where we we plan it and. Uh, uh, the first thing is uh, remove, this is part of the surgery, remove the flipper, beautifully done, and we are going to try in the, uh, the surgical guide that has been printed. Again, this is the power of 3D printing. Not only you can print single crowns or bridges, you can do so many things with it. If it's perfectly fine. <coughs> Next thing. We're going to do tissue punch. Now, we designed this. I'm going to put myself here. We designed uh, this implant, and the company that I use is a Korean company, an implant, an implant Korean company. And they also, what they did, 
they uh, they fabricate for me. Uh, we position the implant, and they fabricate for me the uh, customized uh, permanent abut. And and they design a temporary crown, and they send the core file or this the SEL file to me, and I printed that. Uh, I printed up uh, uh, the two. Okay, so I have already the permanent uh, uh, abut. Okay. And uh, the core file for the for the for the temporary crown. Here we 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 follow the process of you know the protocol of the drilling. And one of the beautiful things that I like from doing implants with surgical guys is you can't miss. You can't miss. And I'm going to show you what you can't miss. Uh, I'm going to just bring one more drill before I move forward. On, just one more drill. It's coming. Don't worry, it's coming. This is live. We recorded live. Hey. So we again we follow the the protocol, the drills. And let's move forward. Now we already finished the, the osteotomy. And we're gonna need to place the implant through the surgical guide. And this is a time implant placement, so we know precisely where the implant's going to be. So the internal hex is going to be positioned in the right place. So when we place the, the uh, above it, it's going to fit perfectly fine, okay? So this is the permanent above it uh, done already, and I printed the temporary crown. So both, both, uh, both, uh, pieces they're already done. So let's try this in the patient's mouth. Yeah. Check this out. Look at that. It's beautiful. And this is not an, an immediate load because I will take a little off, you know, from the contact and on the leg was going to be absolutely no no contact with the, with the lower incisors. So yes, let's shape it. Let's give form, shape it. Let's make it look like a tooth. This is plastic, but we have stains and glaze that we can we can use so we can make it you know look good. So you know we have to give the shape, the form. Um, we're gonna texturize it, okay, and then we're gonna start polishing. Once we finish with a the polish, then we're gonna be using the stains. Very important. You get the stains, you apply the stains, and the cooler thing is all you have to do is get your light and cure it. That's it. No special appliance, no special equipment, just your cure light, put it in there, and that's plenty enough. <coughs> and there you go. This is the final restorations, and it's going to go in the beautiful doctors. This is this is where we are today with our dentistry. Dentistry is beautiful. Uh, the success rate, this is 100%. We know exactly where we place the implant. We know we have good bone. Uh, we know that, that, that you know having a good temporary, and this is not a temporary crown. This is a customized healing abutment that we're controlling the immersed profile since day one. Since day one, okay. So look at that. Look at the tissue. The tissue looks gorgeous. It looks beautiful. Once we do that, definitely let's get some pictures on her, okay. We can. Get some pictures. Actually, uh, she's coming in uh, by the end of this month because we're going to be placing the final restoration. She's very happy, and um, last time that I saw her, she's my sister. The tissue, everything looks so beautiful. I, I, I'm just every single time that I place an implant guided, and we have these kind of results. I'm, I'm always incredibly amazed how far we have come with technology. And I know for many of you, you will say, no, no this is not right. Well, it might not be right. But uh, when you have the technology, when you can see things, that's why having a cone beam is so important because you can see the quality of the bone. You can measure the quality of the bone. You know exactly where you're going to put the implant. You know, it's, it's taking your dentistry to a completely different level of simplicity. 
you know, it's not complication. It's simplicity. Why? Because the hard, the hard work has been done. It's like a Broadway play. Broadway play. You know the many hours that they spend back there training and getting everything ready. This is the same thing. You know, taking impression, making the design, putting in the combing, merging everything, making sure everything is fine. That's the training. You're training. You're, you're working. You're planning. You want to make sure that thing is going to be, you know, placed perfectly fine. So when that restriction comes in, in my office, from first my husband to first my husband, it always going to have a temporary crown. Always. No question asked. Patient will have teeth from here to here all the time. From second bite to the posterior, it's implant placement with customized healing abdomen. That's what I do. But in the front, you're not always going to have a temporary. Look at look, look her smile. Her smile is just gorgeous. It's beautiful. Okay? So... Having the implant, okay? So beautiful smile. Can't can't get can't get any better than this. And I'm gonna move really fast right now because I have um, we only have four minutes, but I think I can finish this case in four minutes. Um, this is a case of the we trim implant all in force. We extracted 19 on the top, 19 on the bottom. Here you go. That's all the teeth, planning of the implant placements. We have the um, uh, we have the bottom teeth. Now this is where it gets cool. Printed, printed models, printed teeth. Everything is printed. Okay. There's no reason to have a physical model. If you have a prime scan. And you're still taking impressions, you're doing wrong. You're doing everything wrong. There's nothing better than a prime, prime scan uh, impression. Trails impression, meta impressions, all these devices take phenomenal impressions. And the quality of the data, the mesh, the mesh is so close, the triangulations of that mesh is so close that the quality is, going, is, is just extremely high. So whenever you have one of these scanners, don't, don't even think about it. Go full digital, you know. Uh, I trust 100% on, 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 on digital technology. Yes, we're going to stain and glaze it, okay? We're going to stain and glaze all these restorations, okay? And everything's going to be colored, okay? So I'm just, there you go. On this case, you can see on my screen, the bottom's still not finished. We finished the top. Those are both of them they're already finished right there. And this is the final result. Come on, you know, from the most simple, that is a single restoration, to the most sophisticated, you know, dental treatment and digital. This case was treated. Uh, everything was file transferred from myself to the lab, from the lab to the implant company. Everything it was, it was a triage of of working together, and everything was files. We never printed if we had a physical model is because it was printed. So this is where we are today, and hopefully it opened your eyes uh, to do more things with 3D printing. But however, if you don't have a digital scanner, go get it tomorrow. Uh, call Henry Shine and let him know, hey, you know, it's like I was listening to Dr. Vasquez, and here we come make to get a scanner. And again, I'm a prime scan guy, hands down for me. The best now, it depends what you often need. So the experts are here to shine. They'll walk you through very nicely. They will explain everything that you need. And, and so you can move into this world that it doesn't take much to get used to it. Because working with high quality equipment and creating beautiful dentistry, you get used to that very fast. Doctors, thank you very much. Uh, I will be open to uh, any questions you guys have. I don't see any questions here on my screen, okay? Um, but um, I'm open for any questions right now. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Vasquez. And uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, you can go ahead and uh, submit your questions through the have a question uh, box that's highlighted on your screen right now. And we'll just give you guys a minute or two in case you have any questions. Uh, 
Okay, I can hear you now. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, we're just... Uh... Give the guys a few more seconds to see if any questions come through. But so far, it looks like the presentation was that good that um, all the questions have been covered. Excellent. Okay, I don't see anything coming through. So, Dr. Vasquez, any last words before we sign off? Well, no, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And, and again, um, I highly recommend, uh, again, call your Henry Shines reps and, and have them you know, walk you through. and. And uh, Spin Ray also, uh, you know, there's great printers out there. But I will tell you, the ecosystem of Spin Ray for me, it was really, really good. As I actually have 3D printer, I have three 3D printers, and and um, they're always working. Um, and and again, Henry Shine can give you all, you know, your answers and help you equip your office with the right thing that you need. Yeah, that's it. That's all I I need to add. Wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Vasquez, for a fantastic presentation this evening. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Uh, good news, we did record this evening's webinar, so we'll be getting that recording out to you sometime during the next week. Um, one thing we would really appreciate is your feedback. So when this webinar ends in just a second, you'll have the chance to give us some feedback. So once again, thank you to all of you for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Vasquez, and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Thank you.